of God to be instructed of the Lord and to be uh, tutored uh, through his word and I want to welcome all of you on board and let us start this service with God of prayer. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I would like to thank you. I would like to bless your wonderful name, O God Almighty, for yet another day that God you have given us to sit under the voice of God and to hear what God you have prepared for us with your over master to be seated on this table of love that you said you prepared your over God a feast of fat things to feed us, O God of heaven. I submit myself unto thee, Jehovah, I surrender your over God into thy will that God you use me. My Lord, put your word in my mouth, O Jehovah. Let me be a vessel that God mighty you're using to strengthen, to encourage, and to bless your people. I want also to commit. My viewers and the listeners into their hands, touch them, Jehovah, give them the understanding that God of heaven, not only they hear the word, but also they be able to do that word to God of heaven. I thank you. I bless your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, I do pray. Amen and amen and amen. Welcome, welcome. I'm so grateful to the Lord. We would like to go dig in into the word of the Lord. For man shall not live by every by, by, by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And uh, God always gave us his word. And the reason why God gives us his word is that because he is seeking. God is in the business of seeking individuals for individuals that are going to worship him. Uh, Jesus talking to the Samaritan woman in the book of John, uh, the fourth chapter of the scripture life there. And Jesus is talking to this Samaritan woman, and uh, this Samaritan woman said, first number of John, the fourth chapter, and first number 19, uh, there was that conversation between Jesus and this woman. Then the woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Verse 20, our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and you say that in Jerusalem, he, and you say, you say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. There was that discussion, there was that uh, a conversation between Jesus Christ and the Samaritan woman. And Jesus answered, first number 21, and Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when you shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship, worship the Father. First 22, you worship, ye know not what he said first number 23 is what i wanted but the hour cometh jesus said but the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the father in the spirit and in the truth underlying the last part of it it says for the father seeketh such to worship him the reason why god has given us the word the reason why god has given us the ministry 
It is in the process of seeking faithful individuals that are going to worship him in the spirit and also in the truth. Uh, God is seeking for individuals that are going to uh, hold on the word of God. They are going to hold on the truth. They are not going to deviate from the truth, but they are going to follow the Lamb with us wherever he goeth. So even today, as we go through the word of the Lord, I'm being used to the Lord to share the word of the Lord. As God is seeking for individuals, individuals that are going to uh, worship him in the spirit and in the truth. So we, we thank God for this and this is the woman, the Bible is saying Jesus is seeking, God is seeking for individuals that are going to worship him in sincerity and in truth and that is every preaching and every exposition of the word of the Lord is to prepare individuals to be acceptable to the Lord that when God is seeking then he may be found and the Bible says again in the book of Isaiah the 66th chapter, I believe it is a first of scripture line there that I do want. Uh, God is seeking, God is in the business and the process of seeking uh, for individuals that are going to worship him in the spirit and in truth. Isaiah the 66th chapter and verse number 2, the scripture says, For all those things I have mine hand made, uh, this is God that, uh, that if I may read verse number 1, says, That says the Lord, the heaven is my throne. This is God uh, telling man that his deity, his power, and his authority. He said that the heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house? Where is the house that you built unto me? And where is the priest of my rest? In other words, God is saying there is nothing that you can give him. There is nothing that you can present to the Lord uh, that will attract his attention. But he is in the business of looking something special. And not the things of this world, not even this earth, because he said, I've created everything, I formed everything. So what there is nothing, not even a structure, not even anything uh, that we can seek, we can give to the Lord. But he said, first number two, uh, he said, for all these things I have my hand made, and all those things I have been, have been said the Lord. But to this man will I look. Listen, we are coming from the book of John. Where Jesus is saying, God is seeking such to worship him. People that are going to worship him in sincerity and in truth. Individuals that are going to follow the Lord with all their hearts. Uh, they have a sincere heart. They have uh, no hypocrisy. Uh, they have no marriage in their hearts. But when they say they love God, they serve God, they mean it from their heart. That is what God is looking for. He is not looking for all these other things. Because he, he said, all these other things, I have made them, saith the Lord. But to this man will I look, even to him that is, of, is a poor and of a contrite spirit. And the individual, that poverty, we are not talking about man that is poor, poor, but we are talking about a humble spirit, a, hum, a humble man. Uh, he, is a, he is a man that is, has humility. A man that have uh, the desire to serve God. God is looking for it. If he is saying, I'm not looking for a building to abide or to stay in. I'm not looking for uh, people uh, that are not sincere. He said, but I'm looking for an individual that is poor and of a contrite spirit uh, and that trembles at my word. God is saying, though we appreciate the structures, we appreciate, we appreciate uh, buildings, church buildings, but God is saying that his favorite place uh, to dwell in is a contrite heart. It's an individual that serves God not with hypocrisy, but with sincerity. In the book of uh, John, the 14th chapter and verse number 23, uh, first of scripture like there, the Bible says, Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words. This is a man that trembleth at the word of God, a man that feareth God, a man that obeys the word of God. He cannot go contrary to the word of God. He said, if a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father, listen to this, will love him, and we, that is Jesus and the Father, God Almighty and the Son, he said, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. In other words, they become a dwelling place. Listen, he's saying, all these things are created. 
All these things I have made with my hand. Even no building that can contain the presence of God. But God is looking for a man that is going to tremble as at his word. A humble individual, a humble and a contrite spirit. Praise be to Jesus. Is a man that is, a, the Bible says, a man that is a, a, before his own eyes. Uh, he, he, he is humble. It doesn't matter how high he go. It doesn't matter what he possess, the other possessions. But this guy will always be humble, will always be uh, having that humility. He will always serve God in humility. And that is what Jesus is saying. Me and my father will come, he said, and we will come unto him and make our dwelling, our abode with him. In other words, you have the blessings of God. You have the endorsement of God. You have uh, the favor of God. You have the, uh, the, the, the covering of God over your life and you can walk uh, with God. And that is why even in the book of uh, uh, First Samuel, the 15th chapter and first number 17, when a soul was the reason why Saul of Kish was ordained king of Israel, it is because Samuel said, uh, when thou was little in thine own sight, that is a humble man, that is a humble individual. When you are little, when you are little in your own sight, in other words, uh, this was a man that was of poor and a contrite spirit. It didn't matter what they possessed, it didn't matter what they have, but he was a man that was before himself, or rather when he analyzes himself, he felt he was not worthy even to be a called a man to lead and to have influence in Israel. Why? Because he had a humble heart. He was a poor and a contrite spirit. And that is what God is looking for. I'm saying God is looking for a man that is of a contrite spirit. A man that is a, a humble. A man that before himself, uh, he, when he analyzes himself, he says, I don't, what, I'm not worthy. And when Saul was called to be king over Israel, first, chapter 9 of the book of 1 Samuel and verse number 21, the Bible says, and Saul answered and said, who am I? He said, am I not a Benjaminite? Am I not a Benjaminite? Look at how he categorized himself. Look at how he was humble. He said, of the smallest of the tribes of Israel. Remember, God has sent Samuel uh, to go and ordain king. Uh, he has said, I'm going to uh, send a man to come to you. And you're going to ordain him king over Israel. He is going to lead God's people. And this man happened to be Saul of Kish. And this man, he was a Benjaminite. Benjaminite was the tribe of Benjamin. And Benjamin was the last son of Jacob. And he was, uh, uh, that tribe was, uh, was hated. And, and the less of the tribes of Israel fought with them. They never respected them. They almost even killed them. If you can put your finger there. And we go to the book of Judges. The, the 20th chapter and verse number 46. Uh, the Bible is saying so that all. Oh, verse number 45. And they turned and fled toward the wilderness. Unto the lock of Lemon. And, 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 and they grinned of them in the highways. 5,000 men. And pursued after them with Gidon and slew 2,000 men of them, verse number 46. So that all which fell that day of Benjamin, look at that, of Benjamin, were 20 and 5,000 men that drew the sword. This is the tribes of Israel turning against the tribe of Benjamin. This is saying, uh, I'm justifying the statement of uh, uh, Saul of Kish. He said, am I not a Benjaminite? The smallest tribe of the tribes of Israel. Uh, how was they uh, small? How was they the smallest? And uh, Benjamin uh, was uh, despised. They were despised. And, and all these were men of Vara. First number 47. It says, and, but 600 men, the only among the tribes of Israel, or rather the tribe of Benjamin, there remained only but 600 men turned and fled to the wilderness and to the rock lemon and abode in the rock lemon for four months. 
So they, 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 they have been annihilated. Even their children and their wives and their women have been destroyed. Only 600, verse number 8, only 600. And the men of Israel turned again unto the children of Benjamin and smote them with the edge of the sword. As well, the men of every city, as this beast, as the beast and all, the, all that came to hand also, they set on fire all the cities that they came. In other words, and now, they, 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 the Benjaminites, not only were they the smallest, but now even the rest of the tribes turned as it were against them. Chapter 21 and verse number 3 of the book of Judges. And, and, and verse, number, verse number 2. <coughs> And the people came to the house of God and abode there till evening uh, before God and lifted up their voices and wept so. Now they are now the less of the tribes because the tribe of Benjamin is almost being destroyed. They only have 600 men without wives. They can't even marry because they don't have no wives to marry. And the Bible says, verse number 3, uh, they say, And said, O Lord God of Israel, why is this come to pass in Israel? That there should be there should be today one tribe lacking in Israel. That is how desperate the Benjaminites were. That is how small they were. Even the rest of the tribes of Israel, they never thought they would be revived. They never thought the Benjaminites will ever amount to anything. Because they were smallest. And then the rest of their brethren, the other tribes of Israel, they turned against them. They destroyed them. And remained only 600 men without wives even to marry, without children. And now people now, they have accepted and they have recognized their mystic that they did almost destroy one of their tribes, one of their brethren. And they are crying to the Lord. He said, why, why is this, why is this come to pass in Israel that there should be today one tribe lacking in Israel? First number four. And it came to pass on the morrow that the people rose early and built their an altar and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings. Verse number five. And the children of Israel said, Who is there among all the tribes of Israel that came not up with the congregation unto the Lord? For they had made a great oath concerning him that cometh not unto the Lord to misfit, saying, They shall surely be put to death. Verse number six. And the children of Israel repented, repented them, uh, repent, and the children of Israel uh, repented them for Benjamin, their brother, and say there is one tribe cut off from Israel this day. Now, I'm showing you the desperate, and you can find a child of God in that desperation, even your own siblings turning against you. Everything turning against you. The Benjaminites being the part of the tribes of Israel. The rest of the tribes of Israel ganged up against them to fight them. And they almost finished them. They almost annihilated them. And they remained only 600 men without even wives to marry. And now these people, they are now the same people going to the house of the Lord to repent of the evil that they had released on the Benjaminites. I'm showing you where the soul of Kish is coming from. And the children of Israel repented them for, the Benj for Benjamin, uh, their brother, and said, there is one but tribe are cut off from Israel this day. They didn't have no hope. There was no chance of revival of the Benjaminite tribe. Because they, the men were there, but they didn't have no wives even to marry. Verse number 7. And the Bible says, how shall we do for wives? For them that remain. In other words, they're asking, where are we even going to get wives for them? Because we destroyed their wives. We destroyed their children. And that is, could be a condition of a child of God. The enemy turns against you. Even your own siblings, your own friends, your own familiar friends turning against you. And destroying as it were even your very future. And you're left in that condition. And they even them, they're saying, I don't see this man rising up again. I don't see this woman rising up again. But I want to tell you, God is looking for an individual. And all this was happening to, so that the Benjaminite 
can be the most uh, uh, backward, smallest, uh, hum uh, humbled tribe. And out of there, God picked a man to be the first king that ever ruled Israel, Saul of Kish. He said, how shall we do for, the, for wives for them that remain? Seeing we have sworn by the Lord that we will not give them out of our daughters to wives. And they said, now what do we do? We have already uh, destroyed them. We have already destroyed their wives. We have destroyed their daughters. We have destroyed their women. Now we have 600 men remaining, yet they don't stand a chance to revive the, the tribe. What are we going to do? And I'm showing you the desperate condition that a child of God may be in. But to me, all this was brought to bear upon the Benjaminites so that can, God can prepare them for this great honor to give the first king that ever ruled Israel. Praise the name of the Lord. So you find now, this man, when the man of God is coming to him and he's saying, uh, uh, you are supposed to be king over Israel. He is supposed to be ordained king over Israel. He is answering and he is saying, First Samuel the ninth chapter and first number 21, he said, Am I not a Benjaminite? Now he knew, Samuel knew the background and the history of the Benjaminite. He said, uh, we, they were, we were despised, we have been despised. And it could be you. You have been despised. You have been looked down upon by people saying you'll never amount to anything because the surrounding and the background doesn't qualify you to become. And if you don't know, you can be discouraged and you believe their report. But God is taking you through that so that he can prepare. I'm saying God is looking for an individual that has a contrite spirit. Psalms, put our finger there. And we go to the book of Psalms, the 51st chapter and verse number 17. The scripture says, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. And that is what the Benjaminites were being taken through. Every suffering you go through as a child of God, it is not meant to destroy you, but it is to bring you closer to God. Is to bring you to that position of humility. You say now unless God helps me. Unless God intervenes. In my own power. In my own ability. I cannot do it. I don't have uh, humanly uh, power uh, to achieve this. That is why Anna said by strength. Shall no man prevail. By human strength. And God has to bring you to that level. That case of Anna and Penina. And Penina thought it was her power. Penina thought it was her ability. But Anna understood that by human strength, by human power, no man can prevail. And that is why they rely on God. Praise the name of the Lord. No man, first Samuel, the second chapter, and first number nine, he will keep, this is Anna talking, after being mocked by Penina. He said he will keep the feet of his saints. And the wicked shall be silent in darkness, for by strength shall no man prevail. And God sometimes will take these a child of God like he took the Benjaminite through a process of denial, a ridicule, and even being tormented and tortured by the rest of the tribes of Israel so that they can come to that level and say, by human strength, I cannot be able to do it. Am I not a Benjaminite? Because God is looking for this individual that I have a contract. Back to the book of Psalms, the 51st chapter. This is the sacrifices of the Lord. The last of the tribes of Israel, they had what it takes uh, to be appointed and qualified. At one of them to be qualified to be appointed king over Israel. They had the numbers. They had the experience. They had the support. But God doesn't look for that. God looks for the heart. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. Oh God, thou shalt not despise. God will not despise this man that is of a contrite spirit, a humble heart. Praise the name of the Lord. God will always, and that is why God sometimes will take you through experiences to humble you. 
to humble you. Like he took the children of Israel. He told them, I took you to the wilderness for 40 years to humble you. So that you can have a humble heart and then you can be able, you can be used of God. To humble you. The experience of 40 years was to humble the children of Israel. Not to destroy them. But they never understood, so they revolted against God. Not knowing that God is working something in them. Psalms again, the 34th chapter and verse number 18. The scripture says, the Lord is, is, is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart. God is near. And the more the Benjaminites were frustrated, uh, tortured, humiliated by the less of the tribes and the more humble they became the more near God became to them and the more you have a humble heart the more you have a, a humble a spirit the more God is nearer to you the Lord is near unto them that are of a broken heart and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit this is God this is God how he deals with the human family and I'm giving you the story of Saul of Kish. Where somewhere say, when you are little in your own eyes. How did you become little? It is by having a contrary spirit. A broken heart. You say, without God I cannot make it. By my own power I cannot make it. By my own might I cannot make it. Isaiah the 57th chapter and verse number 15. The scripture says, for thus is the, the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell, listen to this, I dwell in the high and holy place, but not alone. The presence of God, with the presence of God, it is with them that also are of a contrite spirit and a humble spirit. He said, I dwell in the high and holy places with him also. That is of a contrite and a humble spirit. Praise the name of the Lord. You have to come to that level. It is not every experience, every humiliating experience, every, every humbling experience that is supposed is, is meant to destroy you. It's to prepare you like the Benjaminites. The whole of Israel, the tribes of Israel turned against Benjamin. And they almost destroyed them. They are saying, we, we, we want to destroy them. And only six men remained. Until they also felt they don't even have a hope for revival. A hope, a, pro, a prospect of getting to be anybody or any great tribe in Israel. But lie there in that tribe that has been humiliated. That is where God is looking for a king. The Lord is seeking for people that to worship him in sincerity and in truth and we said to this man will I look God said to this man will I look and I'm showing you then how does that work he said I dwell in the high praise and holy in high and holy praise and with him also that is of a contrite and a humble spirit to revive Though the last of the tribes thought that the Benjaminites are destroyed, but God was there not only to revive, but to pick and to choose a king from among them. To revive the spirit of the humble. And to revive the heart of the contrite ones. This is God working something. And here is Saul of Kish, the smallest tribe. The smallest tribe in Israel. Almost being annihilated. And there God says, I have chosen a man. I have chosen an individual right there. That is going to be king over Israel. A mean, an individual uh, that is going because he has a, a, humble, a humble heart. He, he trembleth at my word. Back to the book of 1 Samuel, the ninth chapter. That is what we are talking about. And here, if I may read verse number two, verse number one. Now there was a man, there was a man of Benjamin. Now that is the story. I've shown you who was Benjamin, how he was humiliated. And the father, he said, whose name was Kish. This man was a Benjaminite. 
a, might, a mighty man of power. In other words, he had influence. But the tribe was the smallest. The family was the least. Verse number three. The Bible says, and the ashes of Kish, Saul's father, were lost. And Kish said to, his, to, his, to Saul, his son. Now look at, look at how things work. Look at how divine operate things. We may say it is by chance. We may say it's coincident. It, there is nothing coincident in the life of a child of God. There is nothing by chance. A time came for Saul of Kish to be picked and to be anointed king of Israel. Though he was from the least of the tribes of Israel. He was small in his own sight. He had the history. But God said the time is coming for you to be given the opportunity to serve God's people. And the ashes of his father got lost. And look at the, 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 the power, the influence, the divine influence. The father didn't just pick the servant to go look for the ash, asses. No. The father didn't tell the, the servant, go and look for my donkeys. He called his son. Because that is all what they had. Remember, they were the least. They didn't have much possession. So all the donkeys have been lost. How can we survive? And because all their wealth is lost... The father could not trust the servant alone. So he said, my son, you have to accompany the servant because that is our wealth. And sometimes when God is interested with you, he can cause that which you cherish and value to get lost. When God wants to get your attention, when your time of favor comes and your time of you being in your position comes, God can make you lose that which you hold with high esteem. That which you value. Kish and his son saw. They had, those were the only donkeys they had. That is why they had to dispatch his son and the servant to go looking for them. Because they didn't have anything else. And this happened because it was divine. God ordered it so. God was in the loose, in the in the in the in the in the donkeys getting lost. God was involved. God was there so that this man can leave his father's compound and go and meet with his destiny. Sometimes you lose things, and in the process of looking for them, instead of finding them, you find yourself out because you have been lost. Sometimes God will cause that which you cherish to get lost. And when you go out looking for it, God is saying, lo and behold, it is your opportunity to find yourself out. To reveal yourself, to be revealed to yourself who you are. And to get to your destiny. Remember, Saul of Kish and even his father Kish never thought that a son of his, a Benjaminite, can be a king of Israel. They never thought. That can never happen. Because they were the least. They were the least. And even you. Let me go to verse number 21 and borrow that word. They were the least. He said, am I, am, 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 am not I, am Benjamin, am I, am, am not I, am Benjaminite? Of the smallest of the tribes of Israel. He said, and my family, the least of all the families of the tribes of Benjamin. Even among the Benjaminites. Kish and his family were the least. And here the time has come. God is saying, because he is seeking for them, to this man will I look. Even to him that is of a quiet and a humble heart. And here is a man that has been humiliated. He is more in his own eyes. He said, I can never be. And God says, that is the man that I want. And for him to find his destiny. Because God knew the heart of Saul. For him to, to find his place. God caused the donkeys to get lost. So God was in the disappearance of the donkey. It is not everything that you lose that you blame the devil. And you blame your enemies. No. Sometimes God will cause things to slip through your fingers. So that when you go looking for them, God will be waiting for you. Your destiny will be waiting for you down the road. And this is what happened. The donkeys 
slipped through the gate of Saul's compound, the Kish's compound. But God was not interested with the donkeys. God was interested with Saul. And that is why even when the father said, back to verse number nine, uh, verse number three, when the father said, go with the servant, Go and look for the donkeys. The brother didn't refuse because God was walking, working in the inside. So the father suggested, the father said, but the brother or the son could not resist. He said, yes, we will go. <clears throat> Praise the name of the Lord. He said, we will go. Not knowing that God is, has prepared uh, uh, his destiny uh, and has been revealed uh, to the man of God, a uh, prophet Samuel. Sometimes you may, you, you may find this child of God with a lot of rage and, and with a lot of anger. Blaming everybody, blaming the devil. Uh, why did I lose this? Why did I lose the No, God sometimes can cause you even to lose your own job. So that when you are in the process of looking for another job, uh, looking for uh, that opportunity, then you will meet with your destiny. Soul of Kish is left. He has gone to look for the the donkeys and they moved all over and the donkeys listen to me the donkeys were not going to be found until Saul found his destiny praise the name of Saul. So they went looked for donkeys all over they couldn't find them asked from different people nobody knew where to how to give them an answer until first number six the Bible is saying and he said unto him behold now there is in this city a man of God. There is in this, because they had already almost given up. First number five. They were almost giving up and saying, we have to go home. He said, let us, first part, part B of it. He said, let us come, let us return. Lest my father leave care for the asses and take thought of us. This is so. He said, we have to go back home. He did know that God was in this. He didn't know God was hiding the donkey somewhere. And they were not going to be found until Saul of Kish found his praise before a man of God. Praise be to Jesus. Verse number six. And the servant said, behold, now there is in this city a man of God. That is why sometimes it is very important to seek counsel. Listen to somebody that is giving you divine counsel, godly counsel. If it was not, and I thank God for the servant of Saul that told him, we have to, before we go home, we have to go to a man of God. All these things, they were connected. They finally, God made everything to learn as a train moving, conforming, confirming every step, confirming the other. He said, there is in this city a man of God, and he is an honorable man. And all that he saith surely, uh, oh, uh, cometh surely to pass. He said, let us go there. Let us go and inquire from him. Let us go and hear what he has to say. This is a man of God. So uh, the servant of, of, of Saul had heard what the Bible say about Samuel. In the book of 1 Samuel, the third chapter and verse number 19. The Bible says, and Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him, and he did let none of his word fall to the ground. God never let, and this servant, he understood that. He knew whatever Samuel prophet said, it came to pass. That is why he is encouraging, so let us go. And that is why it is good to listen to a godly man. It is important to listen to a man that values a man of God. You cannot listen to a man that lands down the authority of the church. You cannot go seeking for counsel from a man and advice from a man that have no respect for a pastor. But this servant had respect for a pastor. He had known how powerful and highly favored Samuel was as a prophet. And that is why he is advising Saul, let us go to a man of God. And I know whatever he say, it will come to pass. And he said, uh, back to the book of 1 Samuel, the ninth chapter, verse number 6. He said, and all that he saith, cometh surely to pass. He said, let us now go thither. Paradiventure. Now look at that. He may show us 
our way that we should go. They did know, even the servant did know, it is not the way of the donkey. They will end up knowing the purpose of God upon Saul. They are looking for a donkey, the lost donkeys, but God is looking for a man. To this man will I look. Can you imagine? You are out there in the wilderness looking for the donkeys, and God is still in that wilderness looking for you, looking for a man that is of a contrite spirit. To this man will I look. We were in the book of Isaiah. The 66 chapter and verse number 2. To this man, for, for all those things, uh, uh, I want part B of it. He said, but to this man, will I look to this. So God is looking. So is looking for donkeys. But God is also right there looking for a man. To this man will I look even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit and even trembleth at my word. So, so busy looking for the donkeys and God busy looking for a man, an individual that is poor and of a contrary spirit and trembleth at the word of God. So God calls the donkeys to get lost and in the process of looking for the donkeys, then Saul was also found. So he said, let us go to this man of God and we get to here, back to, back to the book of uh, so you have a paradefense, and that is why it is very important. And I know many, many of God's people, born again Christians, when they give their testimony of how they found God, you'll find they say, I was just getting, listening to this pre preacher, I just got, got curious, and I, I just passed through a certain church, and I felt like I, I want to go and hear what he is saying. He was not going there to be saved. He was going there to hear what the preacher is saying. But God had ordered his steps. God had ordered his steps to come there so that he can now, through this preacher, get to know his destiny. Get to know who he is. And that is why it is very important to follow the leading of God. Praise the name of the Lord. I am reminded of Rydia, the cell of Papo, a business lady from the city of the Atara. Acts the 16th chapter and verse number 14. And she was just in that city for business. And a certain woman named Lydia, a cell of purple, of the city of the Atara, which worshipped God, had us. They had, she went, she had, there was a meeting. She was a worshiper, but she was there in business, <clears throat> for business. But she had, there was a meeting, and curiosity uh, carried her, 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 her into the meeting. And when she went there, she listened to Apostle Paul preaching. She heard us. Whose heart the Lord opened. That she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul. So God, this sister, was in that city for business. But she heard there was a preacher somewhere. And she went to hear. Like many of God's people. And in the process, God opened her heart. So Saul is in the wilderness. Looking for the I, uh, the, 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 the donkeys, but he did know God also was there looking for him. But he may be able to come face to face with his destiny. Praise be to Jesus. Then so, they, he said, we can't go to the man of God uh, without, uh, uh, without an offering. And the, the, prof, uh, the servant had a little offering. Now, 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 listen to this. Eventually, he ended up they ended up going, and verse number 14, the Bible is saying, first some of the ninth chapter, and they went up into the city, and when they were come into the city, behold, a man of God, Samuel came out against them. For to go up to the high places, verse number 15. Now the Lord had told Samuel in his ear a day before, so came saying tomorrow now this is the tomorrow now tomorrow about this time i will send thee a man out of the land of benjamin look at that and benjaminite the smallest in the tribes of israel they were poor the donkeys the only possession they had is lost they are busy looking for it, but God is busy also looking to this man will I look. A 
man that is of a contrite spirit. God is looking for individuals. Jesus said to the Samaritan woman, for God seeketh as such to worship. God, every preaching, even this preaching, I'm preaching line now. God is seeking for a man or a woman that can worship him. A man or a woman that is of a contrary spirit and trembleth at the word of God. And that man, God said, I will dwell with him in the high places. In other words, they'll enjoy the blessings of God. And instead of mumbling that I have lost these, I have lost my job, I have lost my whatever, whatever it is that you feel you have lost, it has slipped through your fingers. Brother, that is to draw you closer to God in the process of looking for it. Hallelujah. In the process, as somebody said that sometimes even when you're holding your some, some money in your hands or jeweled in their hands and, and it falls down. Uh, you have to bow down and go down uh, picking it up and uh, looking for it. Somebody said sometimes God would make that to fall down so that you can bow down. When you are going down to look for it, you, that's the only time you bow before God. Because some people can't even bow before God. So God has to make sure you bow because the Bible says every knee should bow. So the Bible, then when this guy is going down to seek for what he has lost, then they are seeking the Lord. They are bound before the Lord. We're saying, I'm looking, God help me to look and to get my G will. So Saul is looking for the donkeys. But God is saying, tomorrow at this time, I will send thee a man out of the land of Benjamin, and thou shalt anoint him to be captain of over my people Israel. Now the, 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 the word has been given to the prophet. Now this man has to deliver my people. But this man is coming from Benjamin. Remember the Benjaminites were the smallest. How can this be? We have other tribes that are very strong. They have men of war. They have trained men. They have men that are qualified. Why Benjaminite? Because God is looking for a man that is humble, that trembleth at the, 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 at the word of God. Praise be to Jesus. That he may save my people out of the hand of the Philistines. For I have looked upon my people because they cry. And first number 17, and when Saul, Samuel saw Saul, the Lord said unto him, Behold, look at that. Behold the man. Where now Saul is coming. Remember Saul. He doesn't know what we are leading now. Saul is going to the man of God. To ask for advice. Where to find the donkeys. Because the donkeys are lost. And we, are look, we have looked for, all of, for them all over. We can't find them. Let us find a man of God. A seer. A prophet. That is called of God. That will guide us. And advise us on where to get the donkeys. Saul was busy looking for the donkey. And here is a man of God called prophet Samuel. He is busy waiting for a man to be ordained king over Israel. Two things right there. So it is looking, so it is looking for the things of this world. The only possession they had with his father Kish. But God is saying no. This from Benjamin is a man that is going to be. I don't know what your background is. I don't know what your history is. But that does not change the fact that God will pick you up. Men may look down on you. Remember the Benjaminites were just at one point they remained only 600 men. But from that tribe, humble tribe, small tribe. That is where God is saying I have sent a man from Benjamin. That you anoint him to be king over Israel. Could be you my brother. Could be you, my sister. Whenever you are coming from your history, your background, so demeaning, so humiliating, but God is looking for that humility. God is looking for that contrary spirit, humble heart. And the Benjaminites were humbled, and so was one of their sons. He said, Behold, the man whom I spake to thee of. This shall, same shall lay over my people. This man, that is the smallest, and he has no business. Sometimes, that is why when, when, when he is told that you are going to be king of Isaiah, he say, who? Me? 
I don't even qualify. Verse number 18. And then so drew nigh to someone in the gate and said, Tell me, I pray thee, where is the seer's house? And someone answered, So, and said, I am the seer. He said, Go up before me unto the high presence. He doesn't even tell him and not wait for him so to say what he wants. He said, I am going to the church. I'm going to for the service. Why can't we go to the service together? And this man is looking for the donkeys, but the man of God already have the divine purpose of God over his life. He said, I am the seer. Go up before me unto the high places, for you shall eat with me today. That is what power of God does. Here you are bothered by the things and the cares of this life. God has already prepared your destiny and he has connected you with a true man of God, a seer, a prophet. That is going to tell you exactly what God wants in your life. So it is not everything that you lose that is supposed to, to destroy you. It is God who is in it so that you can, in the process of looking for it, God can also find you. To this man will I look. And the donkeys had to get lost. And they had to remain lost until so is found of God. So find his way to the seer's house, to the prophet, to the man of God's house, to the church. And some of you that are listening to me, and maybe you say you can't go to church until you find what you're looking for. My brother, the best way to find it is go to the house of God. He said, go before me to the high places. Lie there, I'll tell you what is in your heart. In the church, in the house of God. Don't say, I, I, I'll go to church when I get a good job. I'll go to church when I get a wife. I'll get to church when I get this. And when I get what I lost. No, you find it in the house of God. God caused it to get lost. So that in the process of you looking for it, God can also find you. And somewhere, so look for everywhere, every village. Until he said, the only surest place. To go for our solution is the house of God. Paradiventure. The man of God may tell us the way we should follow. And they ended up in the house of a man of God. And the man of God said, no, we have to go to church. I'm just about to leave my house. I'm going to the house of God. So why don't you go before me? And I'll find you in the church. I'm just uh, uh, dressing up and I'll catch up with you in the service. For you shall eat with me. We, shall, we are going to share the word of God together. And tomorrow... After the service, after the sacrifices, after all what we are supposed to do tomorrow, I will let you go and will also tell you all that which is in your heart. He said, forget about the donkeys, let's go to church. That is why sometimes you go to the pastor, uh, crying and learn, learning and uh, learning of, out of breath because things are not well. Things are almost getting haywire and the man of God just calls you down and says, can we first go to church? And you wonder, because you are not connected to the spirit, you say, didn't he understand what I said? I told him my son is sick. I told him uh, uh, my, 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 my debtors are on my neck. And here he is, instead of giving me the solution, he is telling me let's go to church because he is connected to God. He said, let's first of all go to church. He didn't even give so a chance to say, what was in his heart or why he went to look for a man of God. He said, no, just go before me to the house of God. Today, I want you to be in the church. Uh, we are going to share the word of God to, together. And tomorrow after the service, I will let you go. And we'll also tell you all that which is in your heart. Verse number 20. Because Samuel already knew. And he said, as for thine donkeys or asses. That were lost three days ago. He said, as for that, already he knew. Because now he has been found. God has now found soul. To this man will I look. Now he has been found. God says through the man of God, let not thy mind, let, set not thy mind on them. For they are found. Where are they found? Because... Soul also is found. And you are going to find your lost property after you are found 
by God in the church. God coached. God permitted the donkeys to get lost. So that in the process of looking for them, then Saul also can be found. And when Saul was found, the donkeys also were found. Because God has achieved what he wanted. The end result was for Saul, not even for the donkeys. It was for Saul to be found. And as for thine asses that were lost three days ago, set not thine mind on them, for they are found. Praise the name of the Lord. He said, you don't have to worry over that. They are found. You should not have sleepless night on that. Because they are found, for they are found, and on whom? He said, and on whom? He said, and on whom is all the desire of Israel? Is not on thee and on all thy father's house? He said, where, where is the desire of Israel? He said, it's you. Now you have found your way. You are going to be anointed king over Israel. That is what God was looking for. To these men will I look for. God is in the business of looking for individuals. And he was looking for a man that time to be king over Israel. And he was looking for a man that was of a contrary spirit. And trembled at the word of God. So respected the, one of, the man of God. He respected the truth. That is why even when the servant is saying, let's go to the, to the man of God. He said, but we cannot go to the man of God empty. He valued the preacher. He valued the prophet. He said, I cannot go to consult and inquire with the man of God without an offering. That means he's a man that respected the word of God. He respected the order. He respected the, the, the word of God and the man of God. So he was trembling. He said, one thing I cannot do is to appear before a man of God uh, empty. So do we have an offering? And the servant said, I have something little. He said, okay, because you have something little, we can now go. This is a man that respected God. He was humble. I said all this to say, brethren, God is in the business of looking for this man, for this woman. To this man will I look. Him that is of a humble spirit, a contrite spirit, and a man that trembleth at the word of God. And God can cause things to happen your way that you may think they are so bad. But all what God wants is your attention. When you are looking for that which God lost, then you find yourself in the house of God. You find yourself face by face or face to face with a true man of God. That is going to tell you your destiny. Connect you with divine power. Connect you to that influence of God. And that is why now when he is told, are you not the desire of Israel? Is, not on, is the, the desire of Israel not on thee? And all thy father's house. And he is wondering which father's house. That is why first number 21 he is saying. I, are you forgetting. I, I, am I not a Benjaminite? Are you forgetting I am a Benjaminite? Are you a stranger? You are a seer. You are a prophet. So you know who are Benjaminites. And you are talking about my father's house. And me being the desire of all Israel. What are you talking about? Remember they almost killed our family. And destroyed it. He said, am I not a Benjaminite of the smallest of the tribes of Israel? And he said, and my family, the least of all the families of the tribes of e e e e Benjamin? He said, wherefore, then speakest thou so to me? He said, why are you speaking like this to me? Are you forgetting who I am? Are you forgetting where I came from? Are you forgetting the history? Praise be to Jesus and the divine power over rules or underlying the meaning, hindrances. As long as there is a humble heart, as long as there is humility, praise the name of the Lord. He was the smallest, the smallest, the humble, the most humble tribes if God picked at that point from any other tribe there was going to be strife because all of them were qualified 
the rest of the tribes who are qualified. They thought they had the might. They had the manpower, the resources. But God picked. The Bible says God, God chooses there. A first scripture lies there, uh, both by Jesus and, and Paul. God chooses the poor of this world to confound the rich and the prudent. God picks the poor. God picks them that are nobodies so that he can confound the wise and the prudent. Them that have their ability. And God ignored the rest of the tribes and picked a man from the tribe of Benjamin that was nothing, smallest, without hope. And I want to tell you, I want to encourage you, child of God. It doesn't matter where you are coming from. It doesn't matter where you are right now. All what God is looking for is a humble spirit, a contrite heart. God is looking for an individual that trembleth at his word. And when Saul had these qualities, then his background and history was overruled by what spirit he had. And I want to tell you, be busy looking for God, having that humble heart, and God will pick you up. I said, not everything that you lose is supposed to bring sorrow and shame to you. No, it is to draw you closer to God. So may God bless you, brethren. God bless you. God keep you. God preserve you. As you go, ahead, go on looking for that which God lost. The best place to go is to the seer's house. It's to the house of God. So tried every other corner and every other city looking for the donkeys. But until the servant said, let us go to the house of God. Let us look for the prophet. Let us look for the seer. And all, little did he know. That is where he was going to get his connection. He was going to get his connection to the divine purpose. And you are going to have your divine connection to the divine purpose through this process that you are going through. So God bless you. God keep you. It was wonderful to have you in the house, uh, to have you in the service. And I pray that God bless you. God keep you. Uh, I would like to close with a word of prayer. Let's bow our heads and lift up our hands and pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the word. The God, you are in the business of looking for a man and a woman that is of a contrary spirit. A man that trembles at thy word. That God, you cannot even despise. Dear God, I pray through this word, you help us, Jehovah, to, humble thee, to have this humble our heart. In the name of Jesus, that God will be acceptable unto thee, the O God. That, dear Father, we may walk with you. Dear Lord, we may move and flow with you. My God, in your presence, Jehovah Master. Father God, I thank you even for my viewers. I commend each and every one of them into their hands. My God, them that are almost giving up, thinking that they are the smallest, they are the most unworthy, dear Lord. Dear Father, let them know you are preparing them, Father, for greater things. And as they look for that sense of belonging, dear God, I pray that, Father, you may lead them and guide them to their divine destiny. In the name of Jesus, as they look for the things they have lost, dear Lord, guide them to the church. Guide them to the true man of God. That, dear Father, they be connected to the divine flow of God. Father God, I pray for them. Strengthen them, dear Lord. Let them not get weary. Let them not get weak. But, dear Father, renew their strength, O God of heaven. Day by day, through your word and through your spirit. In the name of Jesus, I want to intercede and pray for them that I need. The sick, dear Father. My Lord, I pray as I stretch my hand forth, dear Lord, releasing this anointing, releasing this power of God over their lives. My Father, like virtue left Jesus Christ and fill in the body of the, of the woman who had the issue of blood. Dear Father, let this virtue flow. My God, through the bodies of God's people that are in need of a touch. My Father, touching every organ, every joint, every sinews, every marrow, in the name of Jesus and make them whole. You are the Lord that healeth all our diseases. How the doctors may give names to these conditions. But your Father, you say you are the healer. And there is nothing that is too hard for you. I pronounce this divine healing in the name of Jesus. And the difficult and the hard one. Father, you say the power of the highest 
will overshadow them. And I pray this power of the highest will overshadow thy brother, thy sister, and dear God, you make them whole. In the name of Jesus, I want to speak good, good life. I want to speak good health. I want to speak sound mind, joy unspeakable, and peace in the name of Jesus. Father God, lead them even to the greener pastures. You are the shepherd. Yeah, Father, guide them to the still waters. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pronounce divine favor. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen and amen and amen. May God bless you. God keep you. God preserve you. Looking forward to see you again. Keep safe and God bless you. Amen and amen.